Okay, I'm just going to share with you some of my uh, research. I haven't had the time to collect all these items, and I'm sure there's people that have all these items, and all they have to do is put things together and test it out. So uh, it would involve a little bit of money, but uh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's very promising and allowing you to comfortably get readings at dozens of locations um, because the uh, difficulty with this, uh, trying to determine, you know, what is the exposure, um, it's all in the test, the testing, you know, and the get data gathering. So basically what I've come up with, and this is based on someone had posted a video and he has a museum of radiation. It was just the most amazing thing. And he made this comment that when he was wearing his uh, gas mask, when he was working on one of the watches, he detected some uh, radioactivity in the gas mask itself. So I, that really inspired me to come up with what this idea right here. And basically, I have the, uh, the unit that is a battery for this. It's like a 19-volt battery, and it goes onto this vacuum cleaner. Very small. So something you can walk around with, and uh, it's very comfortable in that regard. You don't have to have this big apparatus to carry around. And this right here is basically a gas mask filter. Now, I went ahead and pulled something off the Internet and got this ugly-looking uh, bug design, you know, the classic uh, radiation fallout mask, and you can see that there's this filter in the front. So... Here's here's kind of the way I'm thinking about this. If if this thing filters out the radioactive gas, like the radon gas, as well as uh, the radioactive part particulates, then why not use that as a means to catch the concentrations within a filter using a vacuum? And if you can attach this on here so it's airtight enough, uh, there should be no problem with going into uh, entryways where a lot of public would... Uh, travel like say in your house you've got an entry where, where your carpet is right and people are tracking stuff in all the time that'd be a great place to do a check okay and what i would do is just hold this up about six inches up off the carpeting and just kind of walk around and let you're, you're not going to get down you're not going to try to be you know vacuuming dirt up off the floor what you're going to try to do is just get the gases that are released the off gassing that way you could probably reuse the filter um and that's the other question is uh, some, you know, if some people out there have these and they could do a quick test and then they get like, let's say they use a piece of uranium or something that's radioactive to check it, then they can uh, see if there's any way to clean it and then be able to reuse it. So because there's a possibility that once you use this for that, you, you can't get that stuff off. So those are the kinds of questions that need to be answered by just testing. OK, so let's say we've got. We've taken some samples at a specific location, and we want to check uh, to see if there's anything there. And what I would do, what I've personally been thinking first is, like, you go to a place where a lot of people, there's a lot of traffic. Like, say this is, a, this is like a mall entrance to a store, and you just kind of nonchalantly take a reading off of this floor and just kind of walk around in a circle. And, you know, let the people, let someone there at the door know what you're, that you're just going to do a test here of, you know, and we'll, you'll let them know what you find out. Now, the reason I, I'm kind of uh, focused in on these entryways where people walk is because let's say there's like a lot of uh, water on the street outside. Um, you're going to get a really good idea of the type of fallout that might be in that neighborhood or town because, you know, people are going to track this st stuff in on their feet if it's, if it's there at all. Okay. And that's, I think that's a really good way to determine if that area has had any fallout, okay? Um, because people just notoriously wipe their feet onto the carpet. So uh, you're going to get a pretty good idea there. So, um, And I would, I would focus in on high concentration areas where there a lot of people would be walking to do that test. Okay, so let's say you do, you do one test with the one filter, all right? Now you take once you have this filter that has been uh, where what I would use the word sniffed. You you sniff this uh, the carpet at this location. I'd put this in a, a Ziploc bag, and then when you get home, this thing right here is basically a radon detector. 
So it's going to detect radioactive ga gas. And uh, there's about three different types on the Internet. And then uh, some of them will get, get real expensive quick. But uh, I think this one sells for about $125. And then I've seen some other ones that were about, uh, I think they were 50 Now, the way this thing works is uh, the number, there's a number that reads out here. And I guess if it gets to four, that's supposed to be bad. So my idea was to take this, put it inside the Ziploc bag, along with this, you know, thing you're going to check out, okay? And I don't see any reason why this couldn't be a way of checking for the presence of radioactive contaminants, okay? So you don't need to get involved with the EPA. You don't need to get involved with, uh, you know, hiring somebody, paying them $500 to go out and to check one entryway. You could probably do this in your leisure time. Um, and, you know, if you do find something and uh, you go back, let's say you got three or four of these filters uh, or you got a, you got a cap that you put on top of here with that maybe even you can use uh, like a coffee filter. And that would be something that would go on the front here that you could take on and off so that every time you go to a different location, you could mark it and put it in a separate baggie. Then when you get home, you could use this detector to check each location. Let's say you get something, something that's abnormal, okay? And then maybe you got a friend who also has one of these devices, okay? And he might have his system. You get double redundancy. Let's say you both check the location. I think that you're you're kind of uh, you're bordering on uh, having enough evidence to go contact somebody in authority, and then they, then like then the EPA might want to come out and you know find out more about it but uh for me personally i like to get some numbers uh, i'm not satisfied with the way the epa is doing things you know um it, it took me quite a bit of uh study to conclude on this method right here and uh i like the idea and i just wanted to share it share it with everyone because you know it might take me a couple of weeks before i get up get all these components and someone out there might actually have the stuff so the other thing I wanted to talk about is you got to be careful when you're make when you're doing readings, because there are some things in your in your home that are naturally going to give off radiation. And this is a granite countertop, and one of the things that I was learning about was that they actually sell these devices for detecting radioactive uh, areas on the uh, countertop because there's there's actually radium. Uh, radiation emitting sections in some of the stone materials and it's it, it's not the whole countertop that does it it's like little hot spots and they actually do these scans where they go back and forth across the countertop and then they treat it with something to, it's like some type of a radioactive shield and it just was amazing when i found out that so uh you know that's one of the things that that might come as a complete surprise to a lot of people is once you start doing these tests uh you're going to what you're going to realize is you've been bombarded with this stuff your whole life and you just never had the device to check for it. So what, what I'm really, uh, what I'm really excited about, it, it, you know, it's, it's not the Geiger counter that you need right now. Okay. That's like, that's if you're like really close to the, uh, the problem zone where the stuff like Chernobyl, let's say you're within 50, 50 miles of it, you know, and, and you, you look at some of those videos on YouTube where that, those people take a Geiger counter and they go over to Chernobyl. They got to get down on the ground to get a reading. You know, yeah, you might have a little bit in the atmosphere, uh, but but that guy's pretty close to that that reactor. You know, where it used to be running. So I I like the idea with the radon detector because radon is the gas that's emitted uh, after the radioactive contaminants get down into the soil. And again, the way you do this test, you just you you use this device to sniff whatever. Uh, you're trying to um, do a test on, and you could probably uh, have this sniff for like one to five minutes over top of the area that you're trying to make get a reading on, and I would hold it up about four inches off the floor, okay? Because you're not what you're not trying to like clean it. You're just trying to take the gases that that are coming up off of that surface, and if there's any wind blowing or if there's any drafts you're going to have a difficulty getting a good reading. So you got to keep that in mind and, uh, you know, put this together with this unit right here in a Ziploc baggie and 
it might have to remain in there for six hours in order to get a reading. Um, and if you don't get any reading at all, then that's great. I mean, that's, you know, the, the reason I continued on this and, and continued coming up with other ideas because I really don't have an answer. You know, I really don't know if there is any danger. And uh, you, you're not going to know unless you do a test, and you do a test that's accurate. And uh, holding a Geiger counter, walking outside every day and checking the atmosphere, um, that's not going to cut it. Um, you know, you might have gotten something in the initial rainfall if you were somewhere between Alaska and me- down through Mexico, you know. But right now, I just don't see uh, you been a- there, there being any way to get uh, a reading unless you use a radon detector and you get uh, these parts per million to concentrate on some type of a filter. So, and one of the other things that, uh, this image right here, one of the other things I was I was considering, um, high concentration, high traffic areas, entryways to schools. So, you know, this is where it starts to really bother me because children are the most susceptible to... Uh, problems with radiation and if large (laughs) groups of kids you know in these entryways you know i would i would first go to a public place and uh if you find out that you do readings and you are meticulous to make sure you don't cross contaminate anything and and what i mean by that is you it might be a good idea to take this filter and put this in this put it in with this unit in that bag and check to make sure there's nothing on here that's radioactive and I mean that's that's where uh, you've got to be a perfectionist. You you cannot make a mistake because uh, you could get false readings. And if you look at the uh, the medical uh, professionals over there at Fukushima, they're when they're using these detecting uh, units, they got them in plastic bags. Okay, they're reading the radioactivity through the bags so that they don't get any contaminants on the on the uh, detector. Okay, and you have to be that meticulous. So anyway, um, let me know how it turns out. And if anybody's got these components or they just need to buy one or two of the the items, um, go for it and let me know how it turned out. And thanks for watching.